Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Conservatives say they will seek to control immigration by introducing a points-based system that would be firm but fair if they win the election. But the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, stopped short of committing to reducing the overall numbers of people coming to the UK. The Prime Minister said immigration could come down in some sectors, but he didn't want the UK to be closed to the rest of the world. Here's our Home Editor, Mark Easton. People have called Lowestoft home since the Stone Age. Its name from the Old Norse means homestead. But not enough people want to come and live here these days. If Lowestoft has an immigration problem, it's not that there are too many migrants coming to the town, but too few. The national immigration figures explain the problem. Since the Brexit referendum in 2016, net migration into the UK has fallen, still historically high, but down 20%. Within that change is a more dramatic shift. Net migration from outside the EU has gone up 21%. But from inside the European Union, it's down by more than two-thirds in just three years. That huge fall in overall EU migration to the UK has seen some sectors that have relied on European workers struggling to adapt. In this part of the world, that's led to insurmountable recruitment problems. Kind of being at the end of the line and at the edge of everything. We don't have people that just pass through. We don't have As chief executive of a community trust in Lowestoft, Emma Ratson knows how desperate staff shortages can be for the town's most vulnerable citizens. We don't have much immigration out here, which um, will be you know, good news to hear for lots of people, but actually in terms of finding people to fill social worker posts, GP posts, teaching jobs, it's actually a real problem for us. Health is a significant concern. There have been moves to bring in GPs from abroad. Care homes are closing. There aren't enough willing people locally to fill the vacancies. And it's that problem that lies behind confusion today as to what a Conservative government would do about immigration. A statement from party headquarters this morning quoted the Home Secretary saying, we will reduce immigration overall. But by this afternoon, she couldn't say whether it should go down or up. Conservative Party wants to control immigration. I'll ask you again, do you want immigration to go up or down? Well, we will be controlling immigration. But does that mean it, it goes down? Well, we will be able to control immigration numbers. Do you want to reduce the numbers of immigrants who come to this country? Well, we want immigration that is fair. The suggestion is you want to lower immigration, is that right? Well, we will be able to control who comes to our country and also the reasons as to why people are coming here. In Middlesbrough on Teesside, one can find the other side of the immigration argument, that foreign arrivals put extra pressure on public services and jobs. Well, I think they do need to bring down the population. It's, we haven't got enough spaces. Yeah, I think they should bring it down, because obviously it's taking our jobs and that. All the parties give you all the spill, what they're going to do, what they're not going to do, and then at the end of the day, you don't see any difference with any of them. It's the different experiences of places like Middlesbrough and Lowestoft that explain why the parties won't be clear about immigration. Labour's talked of extending free movement. The Liberal Democrats want a system that works for the economy, and the SNP wants more immigration for Scotland. But in truth, Britain still doesn't know what controlling our borders should look like. Mark Easton, BBC News, Lowestoft. Well, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has refused to say whether he would want to increase or decrease immigration if he became Prime Minister. But he has hinted that Labour would make it easier for families to bring relatives to live in the UK from overseas and for foreign workers to come to the UK to fill skills shortages. He was talking to our political editor, Laura Kunzberg. Would you like to see immigration go up or down? I want to see immigration being fair and we'll see what the outcome of that is. But the principle has to be that there are many families in Britain that want to bring relatives here to, and families should be, have a chance to live together but can't because of the income levels they're required to do. And also we have to be realistic that in this country we're not training enough people. So there's going to be immigration in the future. As a point of principle, would you be happy if it went up or would you rather see it go down? I want people to be able to be reunited with their families and I want British people to be able to work across Europe as they are at the present time and I think putting arbitrary figures on it as successive governments have done simply doesn't work. You don't have a strong view on whether immigration should be higher or lower? I want our system to be decent, 
to be fair and our services to be properly run and properly staffed. Now in September, your party voted to extend freedom of movement. Some of your biggest backers, including the leader of the Unite Union, Len McCluskey, think that isn't manageable. What do you think? Well, the conference motion was passed. It doesn't necessarily form part of the manifesto, but I do think we have to recognise there are many people in Britain who have partners who are from Europe or the other way around and have children, who are therefore the children of both. We cannot stop them moving about. But your manifesto in 2017 said that you would end freedom of movement. It sounds like your manifesto in 2019 will say something very Look, different. Um, we are meeting in this weekend to decide the contents of our manifesto and that will come to a decision. The 2017 manifesto also said Labour accepts the referendum result. Now you are offering people another referendum. Doesn't your change of heart on Brexit undermine people's trust? I think what we've done is a sensible approach. I recognise why people voted remain and why people voted leave. But don't you think there will be some people listening to you now who might have voted leave Labour in 2017, who think, hang on a minute, you told me 2000, in 2017 that you accepted the referendum result, that it was done, and now this time you're saying it's not done. Now, doesn't that have consequences for people's trust in you? We're doing everything to ensure that the trade relationship, the jobs and the rights that are accompanied by EU membership are retained in the future, and that those very large numbers of people that demanded a referendum have also got the opportunity to make their views known in a final say on it. Labour also used to say though there couldn't be another referendum in Scotland. Now you say perhaps there might be. Isn't that again a question of trust? No, it's a question of realism. The question is Scotland has poverty, has bad housing, has a need for infrastructure investment. Labour's position was in the last general election there would not be another Scottish independence referendum. That's a promise you gave to Scottish voters. There is no priority to have a Scottish referendum, an independence referendum. Uh, we want the early years of the Labour government to be completely dominated by the investment that we will put into Scotland. You've also said in the last couple of years though that you were doing everything you can to stamp out anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. And yet in this election, your party has selected candidates who have been found to have expressed some anti-Semitic views. I mean, again, isn't this a question of trust? I have introduced very strong procedures into the party. We go through it, we go through due diligence on candidates, and where there are questions, they are brought before a group to answer those questions, and then decisions are made. In some cases, candidates are removed. What would you say, though, to voters listening to you today who are just not sure who to trust in this election? And they're not sure if they can really trust you, whether on Brexit, anti-Semitism, or where the party is on immigration. We have an opportunity here to elect a government that will end austerity. We have an opportunity here to elect a government that will invest in the future of this country. An opportunity to elect a government that will start to redress, redress the gross levels of income inequality across Britain. And if your determination gets you to number 10, will you live above the shop? Will you move into Downing Street? Well, uh, I will do whatever is necessary to ensure there's efficient government of, of this country. Um, yes, of course. Jeremy Corbyn, thank you very much indeed. Well, as we've been hearing, there is an ongoing debate within the Labour Party over whether it should campaign during the election for greater freedom of movement. The General Secretary of the Unite Union, Len McCluskey, says there must be certain conditions if Labour is to extend the right of citizens to work across the EU. He was speaking to our political correspondent, Ian Watson. I'm just wondering whether we're going to be able to count on your votes. We're going to do this side of the road. Don't vote for a slogan, vote for a policy. Labour activists here in Yorkshire want to sell a message they really believe in. Yeah, the, the gentleman there was very positive. At Labour conference this year, members voted to defend and extend freedom of movement, the right of European citizens to work and seek work in the UK. Don't really care. The party's grassroots are now pushing for this to become a fully-fledged manifesto commitment for government. The idea for me having a closed borders and not having that freedom of movement is really a terrible one to be honest. I don't know how it would go down on the doorstep but I think it's important to, to stand up for the values that you believe in. But some senior figures have been worried about how this will go down especially in leave areas. If you can tell people they'll have the influential it. leader of the biggest Labour supporting union told me new policies to protect workers could make freedom of movement more acceptable. 
Labour's policy will be to protect all workers, migrant workers as well as local and British workers. That is Labour's policy. It will be done with labour market regulations. It won't stop the free movement of labour. Could you possibly get them all bundled? But Labour has wider tensions on Brexit. The leadership have set out a route map towards a new referendum and won't officially say if they'll back leave or remain until after the election. But yes. more than 120 Labour candidates have signed a pledge, making it clear they'll be campaigning to remain. But more than that, many in the campaign literature are also saying it would be their top priority. And one shadow minister has even suggested that a vote for her is a vote to remain in the European Union. Labour is not a Remain party. Labour is a party that speaks for the whole of the nation and wants to put a proper deal back uh, to the people. The task for Labour when it draws up its manifesto is how to appeal both to voters and to its members on issues which have divided the country. Ian Watson, BBC News. Now, the Conservative Party has pledged to reduce immigration if they win the general election, but declared they won't set what they call arbitrary targets. On the campaign trail, Boris Johnson was touring southwest England when police advised him to cancel an event in Glastonbury after a group of protesters gathered at the bakery he was due to visit. Our political correspondent Liz Bates was there. Boris Johnson was making his sales pitch today. So who else wants to pass it? What's that? Do you want a sausage roll? Or? Oh, a sausage roll. Sausage roll. But behind the smiles, everything was not going to plan. He had been expected here, six miles down the road. But word got out. Boris Johnson, the Boris Johnson, the Boris Johnson blue. And the Prime Minister's visit was hastily abandoned. The Tory candidate, James Heapy, left without speaking to us. Here in the southwest, the Conservatives' main threat is from the Liberal Democrats. In the Brexit backing seat of Wells, a Remain alliance has formed and the Greens have stepped aside, but Labour hasn't. They can't win here, that's the reality. And I think there are so many tactical voting websites out there. People just need to look at how they can make their vote work really hard for them. Hmm. Have you suggested to the Labour candidate here that they should stand down? I've spoken to members of the Labour Party and they just kind of go, you know, <laughs> which I take to mean can't be done. Would you feel disappointed if you standing here enabled the Tory MP to stay on here? Well, I, I, I completely understand people's passion when it comes to getting the Tories out. I, you know, I, I think everybody feels that way because we know the impact and the devastation caused by them. Mm -hmm. But when the Liberal Democrats were in power here before, they voted alongside, you know, a lot of the cuts to welfare, a lot of the cuts to local authority funding. There's not much difference between the two. The Brexit party has stepped aside here, as it has in Conservative seats across the country, in a unilateral Leave Alliance. But as the deadline for general election candidates to register came and went this afternoon, Nigel Farage was angry that the Tories had failed to return the favour. You would have thought, in response to me being incredibly generous, to the, particularly in the South and the South West, where the opposition is the Liberal Democrats, and where, of course, the more of them that got elected, the more likely it would have been we'd face a second referendum, and that's why I did it in many ways. But actually, far from being grateful, what you've seen over the course of the last few days is wall-to-wall -wall abuse. A clear message to the Tories, but they were struggling with their own. This morning, the Home Secretary was adamant the Conservatives would bring down overall immigration. But this afternoon, when asked six times to confirm that, she couldn't commit. By taking back control and effectively having a points-based system specifically, we can give the public confidence in the immigration system that the government is actually shaping and running. And speaking about targets, I mean, targets are an arbitrary figure. And clearly that is where public confidence has been eroded in the past. The Conservatives had intended to put Labour's immigration policy under scrutiny, saying that under them, net migration would rise to 840,000 people a year. I have no idea where they get these figures from. I suspect they just quite simply make them up. 
the issues are the needs of our economy and the rights of families to be reunited within this country and of course the rights of British people to work mainly in other European countries. The Prime Minister was attempting to bring his election back on course as he finished his tour of the South West. With candidates now locked down, the campaign is gearing up, but as today's struggles show, it's not yet at full speed. And a full list of the candidates standing in the world's constituency is on your screen now. Well, our fact-check fact team has been taking a closer look at the Conservatives' announcement on immigration today. In particular, they've been focusing on claims the Home Secretary made about Labour's policy. Here's Anya Pop. The Conservatives are warning that under Labour, immigration would soar. Priti Patel has said that a government led by Jeremy Corbyn could let net migration to the UK rise to 840,000 people a year. It's all based on the idea that Labour would extend the same rights to free movement that EU citizens have to immigrants from the rest of the world. There's just one problem. This is not Labour Party policy. It's true that a campaign group managed to get a motion passed at the Labour Party conference in September, calling for a Labour government to maintain and extend free movement rights. But the party has never agreed that it would mean opening Britain's borders to people from outside of the EU. And in any event, the motion has not been adopted as official Labour policy. Free movement is clearly a divisive issue, and there have been mixed messages about it from senior figures even today. Diane Abbott said Labour would extend freedom of movement rights. Union boss Len McCluskey argued against it. And shadow cabinet member Laura Pidcock refused to say one way or another. There's a big meeting on Saturday to decide Labour policy going into this election. We'll have to wait until the party publishes its manifesto to see what the actual immigration plans are. Until then, the exact numbers are just speculation. I've been